Okay, in this video we're going to look at inspecting uh, the EGR valve on a, a Ford Duratec HE. Now this is uh, not a full clean or service video as my valve was actually fine and I was going to have trouble removing the coolant hose which I didn't want to damage. Um, but I had some requests uh, to look at the EGR valve so here's a quick overview. So the uh, exhaust gas recirculation valve uh, gives the engine a second crack if you like at burning its uh, intake air that's to say it recycles exhaust gas through the intake manifold and so reduces emissions and failure or clogging up of the uh, valve can lead to engine performance problems uh, if it's stuck open uh, that's kind of similar to a vacuum leak which means poor idling, misfiring or stalling or if it's stuck closed that can eventually lead to uh, knocking and timing problems so if the valve's failed, uh, it needs replacing, obviously, or if it's just clogged up and super dirty, then we can try cleaning it. Uh, so keeping it clean can then, so, you know, it can be considered a service item along with the, uh, you know, the intake manifold components, which also want to be kept clean. So the Duratec HE EGR valve is located directly in front of the coil pack. Uh, you can see it here. Um, to get proper access from the side, you need to remove the air intake duct. Um, so that's using the little uh, metal circlip type things which you remove just by sticking a screwdriver blade in and then twisting. And then it all just pulls apart. So now we can see the valve better. You'll notice that there's a little hose connecting it to one of the uh, main engine coolant hoses uh, which runs alongside the engine. So in my case I scheduled this job at the same time as a thermostat replaced so I happen to have the coolant tank drained. Um, if you don't want to drain the coolant system then so long as you leave the expansion tank cap on and you keep the hose that's connected to the valve raised up high as you disconnect it, I don't think you'll lose much coolant, uh, maybe a few drips, um, but no more than that. So have a towel handy, but you should be able to do it okay, I think. Um, so to get a look inside the valve itself, you need to remove its two bolts, attaching it to the engine. Those are 10 millimeter hex heads, uh, one on each side, and they're horrible to access. You need a quarter inch universal socket, and then a short extension bar to your ratchet handle, kind of like the setup shown here. And then you go under the coolant hose uh, and you can sight the bolt heads from the right angle from above with a flashlight. And uh, once you've got your ratchet in place, you can crack them free. It's a little bit awkward, but just uh, work at it. It is possible. Uh, and you need to obviously disconnect the electrical connector to the valve and it's safest to disconnect the battery negative terminal. Uh, and if you do clean the valve out anyway, uh, so as to make any sort of mechanical difference, then it's a good idea to reset the, uh, the ECU's keep alive memory anyway, so that it re relearns things, so to speak. So leave the battery uh, disconnected for the duration. That's the best thing to do. And then the EGR valve connector just unplugs with the depressing of its little tab. That's easy. And get the bolts out by fiddling with them. You might need to use uh, your fingers on the socket in order to help. Uh, then the valve will be free uh, with the exception of the coolant hose, which in my case, as I said, I didn't actually disconnect the hose because it is uh, stuck too well and I was going to end up damaging it and I didn't want to have to replace the entire uh, coolant hose as it's a weird forward proprietary thing that's probably going to be expensive. Uh, and in my case, um, the valve was fine and I really didn't need to remove it fully from the engine. So at this point, uh, this is enough to get a look inside the valve. Um, you could even do some basic cleaning at this point. Ideally, you would take it away and soak the whole body portion of it in carb cleaner, uh, maybe overnight even. Uh, in my case, it's pretty clean and obviously fine. So having inspected that, what you see me doing here is just cleaning with a rag soaked in carb cleaner, the mating surfaces and uh, the bits that can easily be reached. Um, there's also a metal gasket, which you uh, should clean. Take that off and give it a bit of a soak in carb cleaner. Be careful not to bend or damage it, uh, then it can just be reused. 
So uh, reinstallation is uh, just reverse of removal. You get the gasket the right way around and then get the bolts back in place, do them up. They uh, don't need to be over tight. You're just uh, um, sealing the air out. Uh, there's no uh, mechanical stress on these things. Then you replace the electrical connector and reconnect the battery negative. And of course, uh, reinstall the air hose and the air box. And then you can start the engine and uh, uh, just run it for a bit. And uh, while it's idling, check for any obvious air leaks around the gasket. That's really about the only thing that could have gone wrong, unless you did remove the coolant hose, in which case you want to obviously check that that's not leaking coolant. Um, otherwise, that's it. Hope this was helpful. Have fun out there.